In this video, I want to share something truly life-changing the truth about protein that can actually help heal your kidneys, even in stage 5 CKD. I'm a doctor, and for years, my mission has been simple, to create a kidney healing diet that anyone can follow no matter what stage they're in. A diet that works even when things look impossible. One that can help you stay off dialysis and start feeling like yourself again. Here's what most people don't realize. Doctors rarely talk about the real renal diet. Instead, most CKD patients are told to follow impossible meal plans, ones that turn eating into a full-time job. You're told to measure every bite, every snack, every day. It's exhausting, and for most people, it just doesn't work. Within weeks, they give up, and their kidneys suffer even more. That ends today. I'm going to share the exact method I use with my patients, the same one I'm currently documenting in a scientific study. It's not theory, it's something that's working right now. There are just six simple steps to turn your daily diet from something silently harming your kidneys into something that gently rebuilds them. And please don't skip the last step. That's where I reveal which plant-based foods contain complete, high-quality protein that most experts claim doesn't even exist. You'll also learn which patients actually need more protein. Yes, that happens too. Let's dive in together and take that first step toward healing. Step 1. Focus on what to eat. Alright. Step 1 The first and most important shift you can make for your kidneys is this, focus on what you can eat. I know, most kidney diets start by telling you what to avoid no potassium, no oxalates, no sugar, no fun. But let's be honest, that approach doesn't last. You're human, and your willpower has limits. When your diet feels like punishment, you'll eventually give up and when that happens, your kidneys are the ones that pay the price. So instead, let's flip the script. Let's build your diet around foods that heal, not restrict. Foods that you can enjoy every single day guilt-free, nourishing, and truly good for your kidneys. Take zucchini, for example. It's one of the most underrated kidney foods out there. Some old diet charts still label it as too high in potassium, but that's just not true. Zucchini is packed with powerful carotenoids lutein, zeaxanthin, and beta-carotene that science shows can actually protect your kidney cells. And the best part? It's light mostly water, fiber, and vitamins. Then there are bell peppers' tiny powerhouses of vitamin C. In fact, they contain more vitamin C than oranges or lemons. That makes them amazing for fighting anemia naturally. Red bell peppers can even replace tomatoes in your recipes if you need to keep potassium under control. And don't forget celery a quiet little hero in the renal diet. It's low in calories, gently diuretic, and helps your body flush out toxins with ease. So remember, your renal diet isn't about deprivation. It's about discovery. You're not just cutting foods out, you're letting new, healing foods in. Step 2. Starchy root veggies and the power of real food. Now let's move on to step 2. Starchy root vegetables. You've probably been told to stay away from them, right? Potatoes, yams, anything starchy. Well, whoever told you that, wasn't giving you the full truth. Let me introduce you to one of my favorite kidney-safe roots, jicama. It's like a sweeter, juicier potato with way less potassium and fewer carbs. You can find it in most Mexican or Asian markets, and once you try it, you'll see why I love it so much. It's safe, refreshing, and fits perfectly into a kidney-friendly meal. And let's talk about flavor. If someone tells me these foods aren't tasty, I always say the same thing, that's what spices are for. You can make your food delicious without relying on salt or sugar. 
It's not only possible, it's healing. Think about it. Ginger calms nausea. Turmeric fights inflammation. Cinnamon helps control blood sugar. These aren't just spices, they're medicine from nature. When you season your meals with them instead of salt or sugar, you're not just adding flavor, you're giving your kidneys a gift. And there are some beautiful spices you may have never heard of like achiote. It's often used as a natural food coloring, but it's also rich in antioxidants, carotenoids, and tocotrienols powerful compounds you definitely won't get from Himalayan salt. Now, let's not forget the real stars of any healing diet berries. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries these tiny fruits are loaded with antioxidants that help repair kidney cells and protect against further damage. And if you have diabetes, good news, they won't spike your blood sugar. So yes, fruits belong on your plate. In fact, fruits are nature's medicine. Apples, grapes, pears, melons they're full of vitamins, minerals, fiber, and almost no protein, which makes them perfect for supporting kidney function every day. But here's the thing, fruits alone won't give you all the energy your body needs. That's where whole grains come in. Whole grains should be the foundation of your kidney healing diet. Even if you have diabetes, certain whole grains like brown rice, cornmeal, or oats are safe, nourishing, and much lower in protein than most people think. And please don't fall for the idea that you need to buy fancy, expensive grains like rye or kamut to be healthy. You don't. The basics are enough. Brown rice alone is a quiet miracle food for kidney patients. It's gentle on your system, rich in fiber, and packed with vitamins your kidneys crave. Switching from white rice to brown rice is one of the simplest changes you can make and it can make a huge difference. Cornmeal is another hidden gem. People think it's junk food, but that's only when it's drowned in butter and cheese. On its own, cornmeal is naturally gluten-free, high in fiber, and low in protein a real kidney-friendly powerhouse. And then there are oats. I recommend them to every single patient. They help regulate blood sugar, lower cholesterol, and give you steady, gentle energy all while being affordable and easy to find. So here's the truth, when you build your diet around foods like these healing veggies, nourishing fruits, and wholesome grains you're not just protecting your kidneys, you're giving them the tools to recover. This isn't theory it's something I see working every single day. Real food. Real healing. And it starts with one simple step at a time. Step 2. Create a diet that truly works. Now, let's talk about something most people never get right how to measure whether your kidney healing diet is actually working. This is step 2. Creating a diet that works, backed by what I call the three life-saving tests. When I ask patients, What's the most important test for kidney health? They almost always say creatinine, or sometimes GFR, which, by the way, is just another way of expressing creatinine. And a few people might even say cis.nc. But here's the truth none of those alone will tell you how well your diet is working. To really know if your kidneys are healing, you need to go deeper. These three simple tests will show you exactly that, how much protein you're actually eating, and how much your kidney function is improving. The first one is the albumin to creatinine ratio. When your diet is protecting your kidneys, this number starts to drop not because you're starving your body of protein, but because your kidneys are leaking less of it. That's the magic of a true low-protein, kidney-protective diet. The second test is serum albumin, that's the amount of protein in your blood. And here's the beautiful part, when you eat less protein, your serum albumin often goes up. I know that sounds strange, but it's real. It means your body is finally using protein to build and repair tissues instead of wasting it through the kidneys. 
Science can be surprising that way but it's also deeply logical once you see how the body heals. And then there's the third test, BUN blood urea nitrogen. Think of BUN as a measure of the waste your kidneys have to clean up after you eat protein. The less waste you create, the easier the job becomes for your kidneys. So when your BUN levels start going down, that's a very good sign your kidneys are finally getting a break. Now, before you start worrying about how to calculate everything, don't. You don't need complex math. You just need regular lab work and someone who truly understands how to read it. These numbers only make sense when viewed together. For example, a high BUN could mean too much protein or simply that you're dehydrated. That's why having professional guidance matters. And that's where I come in. Many of my subscribers have already seen amazing improvements just from following the free advice I share here on YouTube. Because your kidney health is priceless. And you deserve more than a generic diet. Step 3. The real reason so many people fail. Now let's talk about step 3 and it's a big one. This is the reason so many people fail, even when they're doing everything right. If you're from the US, your doctor has probably told you this before, there's nothing you can do. Diet won't change your numbers. Raise your hand if you've heard that. And here's the hard truth, for many patients, that advice seems true. But not because diet doesn't matter it's because most doctors were never taught why a low-protein diet doesn't work for most people. The good news? The reason is completely fixable. While the US still debates whether the renal diet even works, other countries Japan, Australia, Spain, France, Germany, Italy have been using it successfully for decades. Their patients are stabilizing kidney function and, in many cases, slowing or even reversing CKD progression. And after all those years of research, scientists discovered something shocking. There's just one thing one silent mistake that prevents most CKD patients from improving. It's not eating too many bad foods. It's not cheating on your diet once in a while. It's not lack of discipline or willpower. It's this, most patients are unknowingly eating way more protein than they think. Even with the best intentions, even under the care of dietitians, people still end up consuming more protein than their kidneys can handle. One study said it perfectly, for most CKD patients, it is difficult to control daily protein intake even under the guidance of registered dietitians. In plain English, even the people doing everything right are still getting too much protein and that's what pushes them closer to dialysis. Now, before you panic, take a breath. I'm not here to scare you, I'm here to help you fix this. Because researchers also found something truly hopeful, you can slow, stop, or even reverse kidney decline by switching to what they call low-protein food staples simple, comforting and surprisingly delicious foods that naturally lower your protein intake without leaving you hungry or deprived. This is where healing begins. Not in fear, but in understanding. Once you know why things haven't been working, you can finally start doing what does. Step 4, Aperteic, Zero Protein, Staple Foods. Alright, Step 4 and this one can truly change everything. Let's talk about aperitif staple foods, special kinds of pasta, rice, and bread made specifically for people with kidney disease. Science is very clear on this. These foods can slow kidney decline, lower creatinine, and help you stay off dialysis longer sometimes by years, even decades. Here's why they matter so much. When you're living with CKD, Every single gram of protein you cut makes a difference. The challenge is that almost everything we eat even the so-called healthy options like whole grains still contains protein. Not a lot, but enough to quietly push your kidneys beyond their limit day after day. 
That's why these zero-protein staples are such a gift. They let you eat satisfying, real meals pasta, bread, rice without overloading your kidneys. You can finally get enough calories without paying the price in protein. Brands like Flavis, Loprofen, and Aprotin make these foods. In Italy, you'll find them in most pharmacies and supermarkets. In the US, Australia, and other countries, you can easily order them online and trust me, they're worth every effort. Now, if you're someone who loves rice, listen closely because this next part is amazing. There's a Japanese fermented brown rice that's making waves in medical journals. In a study published in the Journal of Diabetes and Its Complications, researchers called it the only food proven to preserve kidney function. And no, this isn't some online hype. It's peer-reviewed science. Here's what makes it so powerful. It's whole grain brown rice with most of the protein carefully removed, and then it's fermented. That fermentation process turns it into a living, healing food rich in natural probiotics, anti-inflammatory compounds, and gut-protective nutrients. When scientists tested it on diabetic CKD patients, protein loss in the urine dropped dramatically from 1.34 down to 0.58. Doctors were stunned. So if you can get your hands on these foods zero-protein pasta, bread, rice, or that incredible Japanese fermented brown rice, add them to your daily routine. Because the truth is, kidney healing doesn't always come from adding more sometimes it's about removing just enough of the wrong thing, and making that effortless. Step 5. Personalization Your Diet you're healing now we've reached step 5 personalization. And this one is absolutely critical. Here's the honest truth, following someone else's renal diet is like wearing their prescription glasses. It might look fine from the outside, but the moment you try it on, you'll realize, something's not right. Every kidney patient is unique your labs, your symptoms, your stage. Your body's needs they all tell a different story. That's why no two people should ever follow the exact same diet. And the first thing that always needs to be personalized is your protein intake. In fact, some patients actually do better when they eat slightly more protein as long as it's the right kind, high quality, low phosphorus sources that your body can use efficiently. So how do you know if you're one of them? Let's go through it together. First, if you're on dialysis, things are different. Dialysis removes waste, but it also removes protein from your blood so cutting protein too much can actually hurt you. You still want a plant-based foundation, but adding gentle, kidney-friendly proteins like egg whites, soy, fish, chicken, or turkey breast can help you stay strong and nourished. Second, there are patients with sarcopenia dangerously low muscle mass. This often happens in very frail or elderly patients, where losing more muscle could be more dangerous than kidney decline itself. In those cases, doctors sometimes allow a little more protein, not a lot, but enough to protect muscle and maintain strength. Third, there are people with acute kidney injury when kidney function drops suddenly because of something like dehydration, infection, or medication. Those situations are emergencies, and diet changes come later, after treatment. But for everyone else for those living with chronic kidney disease your diet is your greatest weapon. The right foods, in the right amounts, at the right time, that's how healing begins. And before we wrap up, I just want to say, thank you for being here. Every minute you spend learning how to protect your kidneys is a step toward healing, take care of yourself. God bless you and I'll see you in the next video.